Hello everyone, this is Zebo and welcome back to yet another AFK journey video. So before I begin today's boss guide, uh, there's a few announcements I'd like to make. So number one, uh, if it's with regards to the release schedule for the videos. So for this Saturday and Sunday, which is this weekend per se, uh, I will stop the three videos upload per day thing because uh, I'll be busy over the weekends. Usually I'm busy over the weekends because of work and stuff. So uh, for the boss guide tomorrow, I won't be able to release it because um, I just don't have the time to sit down like for like 30 to 1 hour to fully record. If it's something which I can sit down and record within 20 minutes, I'll do it. But for the boss guide, usually it takes quite a while to record. I have to take a few takes and I have to make sure that the things that I'm saying is correct. So that's something that uh, I want to mention. And moving forward, I think uh, first week of AFK journey is great for the channel. I didn't expect the, the channel to get like uh, what, what I'm looking at right now. When, when I, I started doing AFK Journey videos, because uh, for those of you guys who have been following me since Garden Tales days, uh, like the channel has sort of went into a slump for a while. So I'm super duper happy that uh, the channel is moving in the right direction once again. But at the same time, I got to adjust my lifestyle. <laughs> I got to adjust my sleep schedule as well as like uh, my, my different uh, work timings and stuff. So uh, moving forward, I'll probably scale down on the content creating portion and in the future i'll also do more streaming because uh, that's something that i really enjoy in the past and i hope that i can bring the streaming joy i had in the past to my afk journey audience as well so the last point is uh those people asking me for a discord server uh i do have a discord server i will officially launch it and make an announcement next week so stay tuned either next week or tomorrow if everything is done so there will be some giveaways and uh more uh, like uh, modifications to the server so that it fits the AFK journey community better. So these are the things that I want to announce. And uh, with that, let us start today's Z Best Get video. Let's go. Okay, so the boss that we're talking about today will be Skyclops. So as usual, I'll be talking about the boss kit. Then I'll be talking about three teams under three different situations. So your free to play beginner account, your end game free to play account, as well as your end game meta team. So uh, at the same time, I'll also be including a substitute portion. So I'll be talking about possible substitutes for the different units that I'll be using. So you guys can change things out and experiment yourself. Uh, lastly, before we continue speaking about the guide, uh, just one more thing I'd like to clarify. So whatever is mentioned in this video, right, is just best damage that are done by myself on my different accounts. At the very least, the thing that I can promise you is that for my endgame meta teams, right, they are the most meta damage dealing team, at least for the bosses specifically. So moving forward, there will definitely be changes with newer units and meta coming in. But as of right now, the highest damage or higher scaling teams are as mentioned in today's video in the endgame meta compartment. So if you want to go for the highest damage, right, that will be the highest damage team. And obviously, as you move forward, it will just be based on how much investments you have in those units. So that's just a disclaimer I got to make. And at the end of the day, everybody will have a different set of accounts and different sets of units. So do try and error to see whether or not you can get a better damage with a different comp or a different artifacts, right? So that's something that you guys should try yourself. And with that, let us start with the boss skill introduction. Okay, so for Skyclops per se, the gimmick that this boss have is two abilities, right? Ability 2 and Ability 3. So Ability 2 is summoning of, wing of Wings of Light. So uh, this Wings of Light is basically four smaller minions. When summoned, you cannot target the boss and you have to finish the Wings of Light so that you can remove the buff that these four units are applying to the boss. So if you take a look at the skill itself, he will summon four wing of, Wings of Light, cannot be targeted and gains damage immunity while a Wings of Light is present. And its physical damage received is reduced by 40%. Skyclock casts Doom Shield 10 seconds after all Wings of Light are defeated. And Skyclocks will alternate between casting the Enlightening Shield and the Doom Shield. So further increase in level increases the physical damage reduction. And that's pretty much it, right? Then next, we have to alternate to the Wings of Darkness. So he'll alternate between these two skills. So one time will be Wings of Light and then the next time will be Wings of Darkness and then Wings of Light, so on and so forth. So for the Wings of Darkness compartment, cannot be targeted, same thing, gains damage immunity when Wings of Darkness is present. And its magic damage reduce, uh, received is reduced by 40% and he will cast Enlightenment Shield 10 seconds after all Wings of Darkness are defeated. So same thing, further increase in the levels from the low difficulty to the endless mode, you will increase the magic reduction on this boss itself. 
So uh, let us continue with the other skills first before I talk about how this boss actually work and what's the strategy for the boss. So uh, fourth skill deals equal amount of physical and magical damage. When wings of light are present on the field, sky clock physical damage increases by 40%. When wings of darkness are present on the field, sky clock's magic damage increases by 15%. Okay, so this is important because um, based on your team setup, right, if you are more built towards magical um defensive teams then you will take the magical damage hits better but if you're more built towards uh tanking up for physical attack cause different units have different stats then obviously you will deal with the uh, physical attack side better so this boss have a lot of aoe the ultimate is basically an aoe sweep so it's a sweeping laser that just sweep through the whole battlefield dealing 260 percent damage okay so for this boss it's actually very straightforward so the gimmick of this boss is he will summon these four minions on the battlefield and whenever these four minions is on the battlefield the boss will actually gain this bonus damage buff right based on uh, whichever side of the unit is present so if you have wings of light on the battlefield he's gonna hit harder on the physical side if you have wings of darkness on the battlefield he'll have the magical damage boosted so the scary part about this boss is when you cannot kill the four wings early enough so he will just alternate uh, the summoning between these two and then he will get the buff and he'll do his ultimate to sweep the whole battlefield so this boss hits really hard i think the issue for most people will be survival because of how hard the boss is hitting so in the early game your strategy i would say is more built towards surviving and then eventually dealing more damage from there as for how to deal with the wings of light you will need a little bit of aoe capabilities in order to sweep through the wing of light as fast as possible another way of dealing with the wings of light and dark will be to just use very hard hitting units to just clear as fast as possible so because the boss will be damage immune when the summons are active how fast you clear the summons will actually affect your final damage output so obviously if you run a full team of single target damage heavy units you will clear the wings a little slower and so you kind of want to slot in at least like one aoe damage dealer that's why over here in the recommended section if you click on this right you have morale in the pool so the reason why Mira and Cecilia is here because they are some sort of AOE, right? Their skill set has a little bit of AOE to help with the removals of the unit. But just a disclaimer, they are not the most meta unit for this boss. So I'm going to talk about how I'm building the team for the free to play portion, right? Then the end game free to play as well as the meta team. Okay, so this is the team setup that I'm running. So I'm running OD. Right, Smokey, Coco, Cecilia, as well as Torrent, as you guys can see. So Torrent is the front line for the tank, as well as the counter damage, as well as the debuff. And then obviously Smokey and Coco for the support package, right? Damage uh, reduction, as well as heals and offensive buff. And then the biggest damage dealer in my pool is OD. So I'm using OD. And then Cecilia is here for a little bit of AoE support. So for most of you guys who have Cecilia invested at a higher rarity, I think you guys will have an easier time to clear through the boss at least in the early to mid stage of the game so this is the team setup so what if you don't have smokey i already released a video as to why smokey is one of the better bosses bossing unit for dream realm he's i'll say pretty indispensable in a lot of ways and if you don't have him other solutions will include the likes of using rowan for faster energy cycling and heal you can also just use Coco alone if your team is tanky enough and then switch out our dear Smokey with another DPS unit so you can hit a little bit harder having lesser sustain. So for the tank portion, um, units like Kruger, you can use Kruger if you have Kruger's EX weapon unlocked because the shield is quite tanky. And then you can also use Brutus, right? Because Brutus has a little bit of AoE, which is one of the recommended unit. And you can actually have a debuff on our dear Brutus. So for those of you guys who do not know, Brutus has a physical defense debuff in one of the skills. So he is also considered a debuffer with the Mauler faction. So he can also be used for this boss run in case you don't have Torrent. So I think in terms of the boss section, it's between Kruger, Brutus, as well as Torrent. If you really don't have any of them, I think running tanks like Lucius is also okay to provide you with a little bit of sustain then you can switch up one of your support for a dps damage dealer so you can hit harder while having more sustain with lucius so for the dps units just use your strongest units that you have right now uh, if you have vala maxed out to supreme plus or vala maxed out to mythic plus you just use vala but just take note that you want to fulfill this faction bonus as much as possible so with that the the, the relic of choice will obviously be starshot spell one of the best dream realm relic 
So with that, I'm going to start the battle and then I'm going to commentate how the boss fight works in the lower rarity. So the boss will just perform a whole list of normal attacks as you guys can see. So this is the wing of light. You see a golden aura and then he will summon four units. So over here, this is where the AOE prowess of certain units will matter because how fast you clear the units will actually affect the immunity status on the boss. So faster you kill the unit, the faster the immunity is removed on the boss. So this is Wings of Darkness, 10 seconds after you finish all the Wings of Light. So he will have this aura active. This aura is basically the damage boost coming up from the fourth skill. So this boss whole mechanic is relatively easy to understand. And as you guys can see, I think I should be able to clear this boss to 100% based on what I'm doing. So if you have Cecia, I think Cecia's uh, summon is going to slam the units harder. So that's where you can clear the boss faster. Okay, so this is where the laser thing hits really, really hard. Because like I mentioned, if you have those wings of uh, enlightenment or wings of uh, doom active then this unit is gonna hit like a truck and then after that your whole team is gonna get wiped like what you see right here so this is the best damage team that i have uh, probably gonna improve my score once i have either cecia at a higher uh, level so she has more stats to survive or if i have uh, more stats on her with the improvement in my equipment so with that let us move on to the next account let's go Okay, now we have the free-to-play endgame account. So for this account per se, I removed both Cecil as well as Torrent because uh, my Kruger is more highly leveled in terms of tiers. And at the same time, because I want to get the most out of my factional bonus. So I'm not running Graveborn. And as usual, Merrily will be included for the bossing because she hits really, really hard. So she will be one of the must-have for nearly everyone. And then we have our dear Odai, which is an excellent damage dealer and the most highly invested unit in this account, obviously. I think Odai can be replaced with uh, Corin if you don't care so much about the faction bonus. But because for this account, my Odai is the strongest unit based on the investments. So I'm using Odai over Corin. So if you have Corin with similar investments, I think Corin might be a little better because Corin, I'll say, attacks faster. He also has a little bit of AoE in the ultimate itself and provides shooting ability, which is quite useful in terms of keeping your teams alive. So the new tech choice that I have for this account will be Skalita. So Skalita is actually in the most meta team because Skalita provides a ton of damage if you have the EX weapon unlocked. True damage and the ability to instantly remove the summons once they hit a certain threshold, it's super helpful in removing the summons as fast as possible. So Skalita has a bunch of AoE skill, which I will leave for another unit review video because this unit is really, really powerful. But this unit is the tech choice for this boss. One of the better tech choice for the AoE side because she's also a physical damage dealer. So synergizes really well with Kruger's physical defense debuff. So as you guys can see, this is the full team setup. And it, as for replacement, I think for Skalita, if you really do have Skalita, like I mentioned, you can just use Corin. Like Corin is as usual a really good, I'll say, DPS unit as a whole. If you have the EX weapon active, because the EX weapon is the part where he deals the most damage. If not, you can also use other, I'll say, like uh, wave clears. Like Cecia is still a good choice, because uh, the summon is AoE, and Cecia also has decent damage output, and Cecia is a physical unit as well. So benefit from Kruger. If not, you can obviously use Rice. Rice is also an excellent choice for this boss. This is one of the niche unit which I mentioned in my ultimate tier list because this unit deals decent damage in the AoE faction. So uh, the goal of this boss is just to kill the summons as fast as possible whenever they are present. So you sort of remove the buff that it applies to the boss so that your team can survive while breaking through the damage immunity. So with that, I'm going to just uh, speed run through this and then see the final damage. So we are done with the boss and I even broke my personal best record on this account to hit a total of 47 million damage. So pretty good. Uh, 
hopefully with this damage i can stay at a higher rank so one thing which i forget to mention is that if you have rainer you kind of want to use rainer in the place of maybe one of the dps maybe uh, od for example so with that you'll be running two celestial hippogen unit and you get a little bit more stats and at the same time because this is a physical attack team odal being the magical damage dealer can be the replacement so that is the substitute and the meta team let us move on to my last account okay so for my main account let's go into battle this is the team that i'm running pretty similar to the free to play account and uh if you have skalita skalita will be replacing corin so what you can get with skalita i'll use barrel as an example is you will get this 4-1 stats which is 20 percent so more attack equals more damage more hp means you can survive better at the same time, Skalita has a better AoE kit, which removes the wings a little bit faster and also provides similar damage to Corrin to a certain extent. So if you don't have Skalita, just use Corrin. I think Corrin is just a pretty good damage dealer in general with a little bit of AoE in the ultimate. As for the other units, they are still the same. So the two meta, most meta unit is uh, Merrily and Rainer for the bosses. So they are here. And then we have Smokey and Kruger over here, which I explained earlier why they are there. So with that, I'll comment this boss fight and then just uh, briefly talk about what are the things you might want to look out for. So let me just uh, yeah, put Corrine here. Let's start the battle. Okay. So as usual, you want to apply the debuff uh, and position your Reina correctly. So red ring means that the boss got debuff and purple ring means that your unit got buffed, right? You get the heal as well as the damage reduction. So here, the yellow aura is the wings of light. So... If you have Skalita, maybe you can kill this even faster, right? At the same time, if you have Smokey with EX weapon, when, once you have the blue Fight Club active, you also do damage to the summons, which helps you bring it down a little faster as well, as you guys can see. So this Fight Club will also do damage to the boss. So to a certain extent, in the end game, Smokey's role is a support, which can also do damage and also buff your team. So that's why if you are Smokeyless, try to reroll for him if possible. So that's for this boss as you guys can see really really crazy damage output like even without the summons even without the damage boost the laser from the boss is already dealing so much damage so whenever the boss summons the unit you want to remove it as fast as possible so that's where aoe kicks in if you are in the earlier stages in the end game where units are hitting pretty hard you won't have too much issue removing them like they'll be relatively easy so how fast you remove the summons will affect your final damage and obviously more stats, better EX weapon, as well as higher levels on your unit all contribute to better damage output. So over here, I have a 56 million damage. So the peak damage on this account, if I remember correctly, was 57. So there's a little bit of RNG involved in terms of the crit, as well as the unit targeting to remove the summons as fast as possible. So with that, that's the end of this guide, right? Do try and error to see whether or not you can find a better combination for best result. If not, I wish you the best of luck and I'll see you guys again in my next Z-Best Guide video. Bye guys.